All right, my lawn garden friends, today I'm gonna to take you through the simple steps to completing a lawn renovation on your buffalo. So let's get into it. All right, legends, so what I like to do first is the brush cutting. Now, I go around the edges and do this first. That way we can get into those areas that the mower or scarifier can't reach. Um, so we can cut them down to dirt using your brush cutter or to the height that you wanna do. Um, obviously with buffalo, you don't go all the way down to dirt as it grows via stolons on top of the soil. So yeah, that's the first step. Now, the second step I like to do is dethatching. Now, you could scalp first here if you wanted to with your mower, but for this buffalo lawn, I wanted to go through and pull up all the dead debris. As you can see in the lower part of the video, there's a dead section through there uh, with a lot of thatch. So I put the dethatcher over this to pull up that dead lawn. Now, with buffalo, you don't always have to dethatch, just a lawn low scalp will do. All right, so when you've done your scalping, I now come through with my mower on the lowest setting and it'll pick up all the thatch and debris and also scalp the lawn down to the lowest level you want to go. Now, just bear in mind, you might require someone else's mower that gets down a lot lower than your current one. Um, but yeah, I use this one and it gets down nice and low. But like I mentioned earlier, you don't want to go too low to the ground with buffalo and just be left with dirt because it will definitely struggle to come back. Okay, so the next step is an always an exciting one for people, and that is core aerating. It is exciting to do and can be pretty brutal on the body, but is really important in the lawn renovation process. So the purpose of the aeration, specifically core aeration, is to drive the tines down into the soil and pull up a core of dirt out of the soil so we can allow oxygen, nutrients, etc., to get down into the depths of those soil and replenish the grass, lawn and roots and soil. So now a really important factor that people forget about before lawn aeration is it is really vital to water your lawn a couple of days out before you lawn aerate. The aerator will struggle and your body will cop a brutal hiding if you don't do it and the tines are pounding into hard soil. So make sure you water a few days out. All right, so the next step is picking up the cores. So this can either be done, as you can see, by mowing over it. I mowed to pick up the cores of this lawn because it was a bit wet still and raking up just meant they would fall apart. So that's your other option. If they're dry enough, you can just rake them up. If not, run over with your mower and pick them up. Okay, on to the next step, and that is fertilization. So make sure you use a good premium slow release fertilizer like, like this one, as you can see in the video. This is maintained from Lawn Pride, um, really good quality uh, slow release fertilizer. There's other options such as 2Spec or ICL or something from Plant Doctor. Anything from those brands will give you something good to put down. Okay, so of course we need to top dress. That is the next stage of the lawn renovation process. Now this being a Sir Walter Buffalo lawn, I've gone ahead and used a, what's known as a turf sand. So it is purely just sand. Now I wouldn't recommend always using sand on your lawn. Ideally sand is only really used for people who mow really low. And I'm talking like 15, 10 mil, five mil, really low, because you need that fine sand to drop through the grass blades and drop into the holes and make it easy to spread. Now I've used a turf sand, which isn't super fine, but it's fine enough for buffalo, given buffalo is a really thick leafed and thick rooted um, turf variety. So yeah, but if you're using a cooch or something like that, or if you mow your lawn, uh, you know, 20, 25 mil, 35 mil, 40 mil quite high, then you don't need to use sand. Just be very aware too, the sand doesn't have any nutrients in it. It is mainly just for lawn leveling purposes and good drainage as well. That's the other reason why I used sand on this property here, because it requires good drainage. Okay, and the final step is of course, watering it in. Now this is the Gardena AquaZoom. I usually get this uh, from Bunnings for about $65 and it's the one I recommend to my clients that don't have any in-ground irrigation watering system. This is a fantastic product and it allows you to use 
uh, you know, change the settings multiple times, change the pressure, etc. Um, and it just saves you going back to the tap all the time to monitor the pressure. Now, when you're putting your water out, just stand there like I'm doing and watch it run for a bit because you don't want to just turn it on and walk away and then come back and find out it hasn't been watering areas and been missing the corners, etc. So stay there, watch your irrigation for a bit and adjust obviously where it needs to go, whether it needs to spread farther, whether you, it's not hitting a corner particularly. Um, look, in some lawn areas, you will get stuck and, and, and your irrigation might not hit all the areas, which means you might need to set a timer and just come out and shift it. But yeah, always stop, watch it run for a bit, make sure it's hitting every area, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.